brought on behalf of Ms. Lynn Brown. Uh, it will be dealt with by Advocate McQuenna. Yes, Mr. Lebala. Chairperson. Well, we did have, uh, we did deal with this application for a certain time, uh, last time, but I didn't think we had finished. And then um, a few days ago, I was told that uh, uh, there would be no further papers filed in it and that I could decide the matter. Uh, that was strange to me because I thought argument had not been finalized. I don't know whether you have the same impression or whether you thought argument had been finalized. And then I said, okay, uh, let's deal with it uh, today. Chairperson, we, we take the liberty to thank you for inviting us back. And we know that you are exercising your undoubted fairness instincts and we are beholden to you and the evidence leaders. We want to stress the following, Chairperson, mm -hmm. that we do not regard Ms. Brown's application to cross-examine Mr. Jonas as being imperious and superior to any other. Mm. But we can be impervious to the issues that the words mentioned and the name of her being associated with those words tend to signify the sound bite it created, but more significantly, the context, Chairperson, the context. Now, in debating this issue with you, can we just set out the gloss and themes on how we will deal with it? In actual fact, Chair, I wish ideally I could go to the conclusion, but I have to navigate. Feel free to do so. I wish to navigate some aspects, actually. I intend timing myself. I was saying this to my colleague, Mr. Lusenga, that I would like to be done in 15 minutes. I don't know whether it's a vaulting ambition. <laughs> well, it's, it's not far from what I think it should take to deal with this matter. Thank you, Chairperson. And we assure you that probably just to condescend and patronize you, if you are allowed to cross-examine Mr. Jonas, mm. it will be on a specific point. We may not even ask him two questions, Yeah. ironically. Yeah. And, and be advised, Chairs, that as we, as we are sitting here, Myself and my colleague, uh, Mr. Lusenga, we bustled, we hustled and asked ourselves a question, do we have to do it? <laughs> and we took instructions and, you know, lo and behold, yeah. listen to what our client says. Uh -huh. I don't want this attention at this stage. It's not necessary. Mm. And we assure you, as we assured her, that this is not the idea. But permit us just to give you the gloss and you'll appreciate why we are here chairperson and the theme on how we want to deal yes. with this issue. We're going to refer you to the written statement and the transcript and we're going to refer you to context, context, context chair. And then yeah. we'll bring the little dung that we've already put before the commission to fertilize the debate on cross-examination, just one or two principles and then we'll conclude. Yeah. That might be 11 minutes or so chair. Mm -hmm. so let's start with the written statement of Mr. Jonas. And just to expedite the, our submissions, I'm just going to refer to the relevant part. Unfortunately, I do not know whether this has been indexed or paginated, but it's, it's part of the documentation that are standing before the commission. And through your permission, I would like to read certain portions of yes. his written statement. I would like to take you to page two of the written statement, starting at paragraph three thereof. 
And the theme hacked there is just to lay a foundation for context, Chair, that we'll be debating with you. Paragraph D3, if I take the liberty to read to you, says the following. On approximately 27, 28 August 2015, when I was in Luanda at an African caucus of finance ministers, I recall being conduct, contacted by Mr. Fana Tlongwani, whom I knew relatively well, telling me that Mr. Duduzani Zuma would like to speak to me, to invite me at I'm, an I'm hour. Sorry, I'm sorry, uh, whose evidence is that now, Mr. Jonas? Chairperson, we've that? mentioned that this is a written statement of Mr. Jonas. Yes, okay, maybe, maybe to just go straight to the real issue in this matter, shouldn't we? look at the affidavit of your client, Ms. Brown. As I uh, see, see the statement, I've just had a quick look now. There are, there are two bases on which uh, she says she wants to uh, be granted leave to cross-examine Mr. Jonas. The one is what Mr. Jonas said, Mr. Ajay Gupta said about your client, namely that uh, there are people that they worked with. Uh, and then she also says uh, Mr. Jonas is expected to come back with names at some stage of who in the cabinet may have been hostile to uh, Treasury or to the Minister of Finance in regard to certain matters. So I think we must just deal with those. And uh, the first one really is uh, What's going to be the purpose of cross-examining Mr. Jonas in regard to the first one? He is not the one who says the Guptas worked with, among others, Ms. Brown. He is simply saying, Mr. Ajay Gupta, that's what Mr. Ajay Gupta said. So what, is, what are you going to ask him? Chairperson, you've asked me several questions, but let me be specific with what I sense is yeah. your concern. Mm. Perhaps before I even do that, the reason why we wanted to start where we started, we wanted to lay foundation to demonstrate to you that what was said was said. The words are not the issue. There are several names that have been mentioned. L let me give an example. If the name of the security guard at the Gupta's compound was mentioned, it is neither here nor there. That's not the issue. I, we wanted to start where we started to show you context. What is pertinent is context. It's not only the mere mention of the word, but just to respond to your specific question. Yes, that last one, yeah. The test is not whether it is true or not. The test is not whether it's CSA or not. This commission in discharging its very important function will have to accept CSA. The witnesses that you listen to, Chair, are not the clients of this commission. They are also our witnesses. We have to join issue with them to fulfill this important test, Chair, of assisting the commission to discharge its important function. Is it in the interest of the commission for us to cross-examine Mr. Mkabisi on a very specific point, and we will demonstrate to you how. Uh, but am I right to say this is the point? It is. Yeah. It is. So True. my question is, what are you going to say to him? What are, are you going to <laughs> say, well, do you confirm that you said Mr. I.J. Uh, said uh, he worked with, among others, my client, and uh, let me assume he says, yes, I confirm. And then uh, you're not going to ask him whether what Ajay Gupta told him uh, is true. 
you, isn't, isn't, your, isn't your remedy this, that to the extent that your client might not want to leave this kind of evidence unchallenged, or well, maybe unchallenged is the wrong word, uh, is, is, isn't, uh, would it not be enough simply that it be told and it goes on record and it's said publicly um, simply that uh, to Mr. Jonas that uh, your client, if that is her version, your client uh, says, uh, I've never worked with Mr. Ajay Gupta or any of the Gupta people, so if that's what he said, that's not true. And uh, what I would like to do is to get an opportunity at some stage uh, to take the witness stand and tell the commission that if that's what was told to him, it is not true. And that's all. True. It, it, it might be different if we were to have Mr. Ajay Gupta here in the witness stand, and he says, yes, we worked with uh, Ms. Brown on, on these things, then that's different. But Mr. Ajay Gupta, is go Mr. Jonas is going to, might just say, that's what I was, I was told. I don't know if it's true or it's not true, and actually doesn't really mean anything. I was just saying what, what I was told. If you say you don't work with, 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 with you didn't work with him, uh, I'm not in a position to dispute or admit that. I'm just saying that's what I was told. That's all. Chairperson, I wish it was as easy as that. In actual fact, the principles of cross-examination unfortunately ridicule that approach. And we'll demonstrate, we'll be brief on that point. We, we can't ignore... What, what is your client's version on this allegation? Because I don't seem to, 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 fi to find it in the affidavit. I may have missed it. Chairperson, if the commission says we should disclose that which we want to ask Mr. Jonas, it's one thing. But if the commission says that, assist us to discharge our function in the context, Chairperson, not the words, in the context in which Mr. Jonas said, Mr. Gupta said that they work with Ms. Brown, then we will assist the commission. And we, 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 may, we may come to that. We may come to that. Remember that uh, one of the requirements if you apply for leave to cross them is that you must put up your version. What is your client's version to the allegation that she wants to cross-examine about? Let's go to her statement, Chairperson. Chairperson, ideally I would have wished to arrive at this point having demonstrated context to you. And I kept saying, okay. I wish you could... Let me give you time to, 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 to give me the context. You did say you won't take long, maybe 15 minutes, so it won't take long. So give me the context and then give me your submissions as you, as you wish to give them. I'm not trying to act like a bulldog, Chairperson. No, that's not. Uh, I want to give you a fair hearing. You know exactly what issues uh, are in my mind. Chairperson, Chairperson, permit us to start with, and I'm going to gloss through the written statement just to give you the themes of the context. In the written statement, the build up to what? Uh, the, the portions you want to read in the written statement, uh, are they covered in your client's affidavit applying for leave to cross them? Are the, they, uh, do they fall within that? Are they indeed, covered? Indeed. They, they come by reflection. She reflects hmm? on them. They, they come, <laughs> and I will demonstrate that, Chairs. <laughs> Well, tell me first where they are covered before you go to them so that I can see if they are covered. Okay. 
Chairperson, I beg your statement. The space here uh, makes me to change the Just uh, beg your pardon, Chairperson. Chairperson, I'm looking for a file that contains the statement of uh, Ms. Brown, it's a file which is written, indexed, and paginated. So, Ms. Brown, then the notice of motion and the affidavit. Thank you. Chairperson, we got it. There are several files in front of us. Chairperson, if you look at the index <coughs> papers, in as far as Ms. Brown's statement is concerned, I would like to draw your attention to page 165 of the paginated papers, headed motivation, paragraph 10 thereof, and may I take the liberty to read it to you? Uh, yes, yeah, thank you. Now, for you to appreciate the context, already in paragraph eight and nine, she lays a foundation that she has not been served with the notice in terms of rule three. She mentions in paragraph eight that, well, uh, you, you, as you read, you, you may just take it that while we, are, we were here, I've read that portion twice. And I can't find where Ms. Brown tells us what her version is in regard to the allegation that uh, allegedly made by Mr. Ajay Gupta that they uh, protected uh, certain people, including her, or they worked with them. I can't see where she puts up her version. Chairperson, context. And permit us just to take you through this aspect and we'll respond to your concern. Okay. If you look at paragraph nine, which lays a foundation to paragraph 10, I would like to read from line number one, two, three, four, five, and may I read it to you? I haven't received any notification advising me that I was going to be implicated by Mr. Jonas or any other witness testimony. Mr. Jonas further te testified that Mr. Gupta allegedly told him that I and Brian Mulefe are protected by them and nothing would happen to him if he agreed to accept appointment as Minister of Finance in the place of Mr. Ntlantlanene should I agree to work with them subsequent to my appointment? Let's go to motivation, paragraph 10. As it turned out, the evidence of Mr. Jonas on the 24th, and this is wrong because we know it's the 23rd of October 2015, mentioned my name. Let's start that journey there, Chair, and hence we keep on saying we'll go to context. Let's go to page 166 of a statement, paragraph 11. He testified that during the alleged meeting of the 23rd October 2015 at Section World, in the presence of Duduzani Zuma and Fanat Longwani, Mr. Gupta exhorted to him that they presumably, the, the Guptas and cohorts are people they work with, they work with Lynn Brown. Listen to what she says in paragraph 12. The utterances implicate me. At face value, they come across as innocuous hearsay utterance by a third party. Let's pause there to remind you, Chair, that it doesn't matter whether it's true or false. It doesn't matter whether it's CSA. Hence, we say, Chair, if you appreciate context. Where is her version? Her you see, if you can't answer that question, whatever you say is not really going to help. If anybody wants to once leave to cross-examine, the least they must do is put up their version in regard to those allegations. So, so you can say whatever context you want to say. If that requirement is not there, you are going to have serious problems getting me to grant you your client leave to cross-examine. Chairperson, please find 
by way of deduction and appreciating context, the version of Ms. Brown starting in the following paragraphs. Paragraph 13. But before there is a context, there must be a response to the allegation. How, how is there going to be a context to her version when there is no version? Chairperson, if you read paragraph 13, then we will deal with your concern. Let's say for argument's sake, let us say I'm with you that she's implicated, okay? But the question still stands, where is her version? Chairperson, may I read paragraph 13? Will paragraph 13 give me the her it version? Gives, actually, it gives you her okay, basis of her read version. It then. Are you in, at paragraph 13, Chairperson? Yeah. I, however, opine differently. This was, this for me may be the seminal seat upon which further insinuations and allegations against me may be built. This anxiety is amplified by the fact that Mr. Jonas has further testified that cabinet was hostile to treasury. Consequent upon that, the chairperson has asked him to reflect on this and return with the fuller details, which I presume will include individuals' names, possibly including my name as well. Let's go to paragraph 14, chairperson. Well, let's, let's start with 13. You said 13 would give her version. What is her version to the allegation that uh, Mr. Jonas said, Mr. Ajay Gupta made that they worked with her and protected her? Does she admit that they worked with her? Does she deny that? Does she admit that she was protected by them? Does she deny that? Chairperson, if the basis of a request for the version was for Ms. Brown to say the following. I will cross-examine Mr. Jonas on the following points to demonstrate that the No, is. no, the requirement is that if you want to, <coughs> if in a statement or in evidence, a witness m makes allegations that implicate you, you want to cross-examine that witness on those allegations that implicate you. If that's what you want, you must put up your version because I'm not going to allow you to cross-examine if you actually admit the allegations. Now, you are standing there on her behalf asking that she be granted leave to cross-examine. And you are not telling me, she's not telling me in the affidavit, and you are not telling me whether she admits or denies the allegation. Why must I grant her leave to cross-examine if she admits the allegation? Chairperson, here's your response. If you are going to appreciate the context and the position of Ms. Brown, and may I, may I check, may I check? No, Mr. Lebala, I give you now only five minutes to show me if in her affidavit she has put up a version to these allegations. And if she hasn't, as far as I'm concerned, I'm ready to decide the matter. Chairperson, no way in specific terms does Ms. Brown say the following. I deny what Mr. Jonas say. No way in specific terms Ms. Brown says the following. I will demonstrate that what Ms. Mr. Jonas said the Gupta said cannot be true. But we say the following. And this is an argument that we wanted to build on. Hence, we want to go to the context, Chairperson. And we're halted in our foot tracks because we can't go past I, it. I, I won't allow you now to give me the context uh, now that you have given me the answer to this question. But permit us to say the following, Chair. Mm. Perhaps we do not even have to tribulate about this aspect. Mm -hmm. We need to pack it. It will come out of the wash as the proceedings go on. But permit us to conclude by saying the following, Chairperson. I beg your pardon. Perhaps your remedy assists us and we need not bother because of the following. If she is not implicated, let it be so. But in the ultimate answer, Chairperson, 
I'm not even looking at the evidence leaders, the capable team of the evidence leaders. I'm looking at any other interest party who'd come and say the following. A version was put before the commission saying Mr. A.J. Gupta mentioned to Mr. Jonas that they work with Ms. Brown. It was not contested now. We take this remedy and welcome it because it simply means any other person, when you go to the closing submissions, wants to raise this issue. This commission will assist us to say it can be. And here is the difficulty, Chair. The difficulty is just here, and may I just refer to one aspect where I want to be the sidekick of Mr. Well, well I, I don't know what difficulty you want to refer to, Mr. Lebala. The simple point is, if you want to cross-examine, you want leave to cross-examine a witness because the witness has made allegations or has given evidence that implicates you, you must, in your application to me, put up your version. And she hasn't put up her version. And I see no reason why, therefore, her application should not fail. Chair, before you even go that route, mm. please bear the following on your mind. And there's a point that I wanted to address <coughs> the Commission on about the difficulty. We contend that Ms. Brown is not the be all and end of, of this commission. She's not even superior to any other witness, but please bear the following about what makes her unique. In line with her affidavit, she simply says, some of the terms of references, if you look at what is mentioned in a statement, some of the terms of reference refer me as the member of the national executives some of the terms of reference mentions the SOEs that were under my auspices as a minister. That point alone wanted to bring the context in which we wanted to persuade you, Chair, that you cannot elbow her out. Now, if you appreciate what we are saying, Chair, then your fairness instincts would say you should permit her to cross-examine Mr. Mkabisi Jonas to explain that important term of reference, which was a part of this session. Words not mentioned in her statement, Chairperson, about her version, do not dilute that aspect. Already, Chairperson, context has already brought her before this commission. Now, we wanted to demonstrate to you that we may have not mentioned the following in her statement. She will deny that what Mr. Go Jonas said about Mr. Gupta is not true. We don't mention that she will demonstrate that it cannot be that she worked with the Guptas. Simply put, and we kept on hopping and feeding on this issue, even, even in our earlier submissions, that she, look at her holistically. She's uh, standing before you, Chair, if you look at all the terms of reference. I'm going to give you two minutes to round of your submissions. Chairperson, these two minutes I would like to address you with the difficulties that we face because of this. And this may come out at the later stage when we have to make closing submissions. And please, Chairperson, appreciate this submission in this context. Mr. Jonas is not only the witness of the evidence leaders, he's also our witness. We wanted to assist this commission by cross-examining him. And permit me just to read these following principles. James. What would be very helpful is for her to give us her version. That is what would be helpful if she wants to assist us. Chairperson, let me take you into our confidence openly. Ms. Brown's functions are set out in Section 85 of the Constitution to initiate legislation, to direct policy, to guide executive functions. If it is yeah, said... If yes, it is, Mr. Lebala, but how is that relevant here? Here's the relevancy, Chairperson. Mm. If someone says that the Guptas mentioned that they work with her, and it becomes a free-floating statement, 
No context given to it. Nowhere is it said that the following, the following is mentioned. The Guptas work with her when this, she discharges executive functions. The Guptas work with her when she initiates legislation. The Guptas work with her when she give, gave directions to the SOEs. Now that she, uh, she may be able to give that if she says, I want to be given a chance to give evidence and deal with this. That's on record, Chairperson. Yeah. But here comes the difficulty, Chairperson. And, and I wanted to take you through there. Here is the real difficulty that the commission is going to face. If a party chairperson wishes to lead evidence to contradict, let's say Ms. Brown comes before the commission. Here is the difficulty. You are left with one minute. May I just exhaust this one minute, chairperson, by referring you to this authority. If a party wishes to lead evidence to contradict an opposing witnesses, take the position of Ms. Brown. He or she should first cross-examine the witness upon the facts which he or she intends to prove in contradiction. Take away the fact that she may not have specified her version in affidavit. Take away the fact that she does not say, I deny. But we wanted to demonstrate to you that by reflection, this is what she says, given the terms of reference. But may I conclude by referring you to this authority, Chairperson, which is in our submission. It is grossly unfair to let a witness evidence go unchallenged in cross-examination and afterwards argue that he must be disbelieved. Now, this is going to happen if, and we are forced to give you if, Chairperson. If Ms. Brown comes before this commission and she wants to cross-examine or she wants to give her version, and in that version she says that which you say she ought to have put in her statement, to apply to cross-examine Mr. Jonas. This is what might happen, Chairperson. And these are the basic principles of cross-examination, the leading of evidence. Now, in closing, Chairperson, that's where our difficulty is. All that we wanted to say to you, Chairperson, is if you had appreciated the context, Chairperson, may I just exhaust this few seconds to say the following? If you have any few seconds, yes. What's the last point you want to make? If you had appreciated the context, the build up, Chairperson, to what's, what was said, that Mr. Jonas said that Mr. Gupta mentioned that they work with her, appreciating the terms of reference, appreciating what she said in her statement to request to cross examine Mr. Jonas, the answer would have been there, Chairperson. This has been subtracted by the fact that... Your time is up. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Ms. Lynn Brown's application is dismissed. She has not put up her version, and I'm not uh, at this stage prepared to grant her leave to cross-examine. She is free to later on bring, renew the application if she meets the requirements she's able to meet the requirements. So the final decision is her application at this stage is dismissed. Obviously, I didn't need to hear Mr. McQuenna. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chief. Mr. Pretorius. Thank you, Chair. It was envisaged yesterday that we would uh, put before you the program for the next few weeks yes. and give some explanation of why we are in the position that we are today. Yes. Um, there are no hearings planned for tomorrow, so we will not be sitting by your leave tomorrow, Chair. The the Commission will be requested by the legal team to hear an application. Uh, we don't deem it uh, appropriate to give details at this stage uh, on Thursday the 27th and Friday the 28th of September. Minister Nenny will testify on the 3rd of October, Minister Gordon on the 10th of October and Barbara Hogan on the 15th of October, by your leave. The 
difficulty that the legal team has had uh, in planning for witnesses to testify this week and next week is that both Messrs. Jonas and Ms. Mentor are out of the country. And uh, that has given some difficulties in programming in relation to their availability. But as soon as their availability has been secured, uh, they will give evidence on intervening days, but we cannot determine those days at this stage. Uh, Mr. Chair, phase one um, that was mentioned in the opening statement is nearing completion, but certain matters relevant to phase one and the terms of reference included in phase one have been held over pending further investigations and cooperating with the investigators. Uh, dependent upon their work and their assistance to the legal team, we will call further evidence in phase one, but we're unable to determine fixed dates at this stage, and it's perhaps not appropriate at this stage to name witnesses. In relation to term of reference 1.8, Chair, you will recall that is the term of reference that deals with the appointment of advisors in the Ministry of Treasury uh, in relation to the appointment in December 2015 of Minister Des van Rooyen. That matter is almost ready. Uh, certain investigations need completion, statements are ready, and the re relevant witnesses will be called uh, in the concluding parts of phase one. Certain other witnesses, uh, Chair, have uh, expressed a willingness to testify sooner rather than later. And again, those with the assistance of the investigators and the legal team uh, statements will be prepared and put before you, also in the latter stages of phase one. So there's a lot of work still to be done uh, before we move to phase two. Phase two, uh, Chair, as you will understand, uh, involves uh, intensive work on the part of the investigation team, assisted by the legal team. And as soon as we have clarity on the products of that investigation, which at this stage we don't have, uh, we will put forward a further program for phase two beginning later in the year. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Pretorius. Uh, just to confirm then, the commission will not be sitting tomorrow and uh, next week it will only resume sitting on Thursday and on Thursday, it will hear a certain application, details of which it is not considered appropriate to disclose to the public at this stage. And um, that might take Thursday and Friday, yes. Thursday and Friday next week. And, uh, and uh, the uh, Minister Nene, Minister Nene, Minister of Finance, will give evidence, his evidence on the 3rd of October. Correct. And uh, Minister Gordon will give his evidence on the 10th of October. And uh, former Minister Barbara O'Hogan will give her evidence on, uh, the 15th. on the 15th of October. And in the meantime, in between, there might be, there might be other witnesses that you might bring in, I understand the position relating to phase one, uh, either in between or much later. Yeah. Uh, and, and in the intervening dates, perhaps uh, on short notice, yes. uh, there may be other witnesses yeah. who become available yes. uh, given uh, international travels and yeah. other considerations. Yeah, and, and that, that includes issues of cross-examination, no? or not really? Well, um, in well, relation Mr. Jonas uh, would give his evidence and then would be, would be finalized and then be available for cross-examination. Yes, similarly, Ms. Mentor, Ms. Mentor, and then arrangements will be made with the legal teams yes, involved. Yes, yes. And uh, so far, uh, other than <coughs> other than applicants whose application for leave to cross examine have been refused. No one has applied for leave to cross examine Mr. Masego. Done. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, well, yes, no one has a plan. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. No, thank you very much. Uh, we will uh, then stop at this stage. The proceedings are therefore adjourned until Thursday next week. We are adjourned. Thank you, Chair. Okay.